Because staining a gel is relatively simple, I just wanted to uh, redeem myself for that mess of a gel that I made last time. Um, so there is that little dot I made, right? Uh, just to show you gel one. So uh, I just wanted to show you once again how we take apart uh, a gel and then ultimately we're gonna go and stain it. So uh, take out, put everything in the gel box. Remember what I said, we do keep the gel running buffer, right? So we simply just pour it back into the bottle. And if I do this carefully, I probably should use a funnel, but you know, I trust my hands. So uh, everything went back nice and neat. Good job, me. Right, so we simply pour that in there, and then I, uh, yes, celebrate everything we celebrate, right? So we put that away, and then um, pull out, ooh, why did I do that? Oh, that's right, I forgot. Got to open the clamps, and then take out my two gels. And once again, uh, that's gel one. I probably should have marked the, uh, where the gels actually sit, but, you know, whatever. And then this time I got myself a nice, good, clean edge. Uh, I have this there to show you where my lane one is, right? Lane one in this case is at the bottom, right? Because remember, inside plate. And then I'm just gonna peel, let the gel stick to the glass plate it wants to. In this case, it's the, uh, the big plate. So once again, lane one is on the, uh, the bottom there, or if I were looking at it on the right, peel off the ladder, no, sorry, not the ladder, the combs, the wells, the wells. And then I'm going to notch uh, top left, like I always like to do. And I believe this is, is this gel one or gel two? Let's find out, I don't even remember what I did. So uh, I believe, I wasn't paying attention, so some of you have. I believe this is gel one. So I'm gonna notch the top left and then slide the tool underneath and then just let it fall into, in this case, what is distilled water, right? Cause I'm just gonna rinse off the SDS. And let's repeat that for Gel number two, uh, did I try to make it stick to the other glass plate this time? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Again, I usually just let it stick where it sticks, right? But you can do it in such a way that you can, yeah, I think in this case, I tried to get it to stick to the, maybe I just gave up. What did I do? Yes, to the small plate. <clears throat> and again, in this case now, uh, I'm off camera, but you know, peel off the, uh, the wells using your nice clean cutting tool, right? Your gel separating tool. And then let's get back on camera. There we go. That's my lane one, right? So top left for lane one. And then uh, bottom right, oh, I'm off camera. Did I remember to go back on camera? Come on, get back on camera. Nope, bottom right. So I launched my top left, top right. Sorry, top left, bottom right. So then I can orient my gel and then simply wedge underneath and then let gravity do the work as it falls in. Nice and simple. We're gonna let it uh, just do a, a rinse in distilled water. So I just do a little thing like that. And you guys, you see how I use my finger to hold the gel? I'm gonna go to the sink, dump the distilled water, uh, add some more distilled water, a little bit of a rinse like that, just to again, remove any excess SDS. I'm gonna dump that out and then I am ready to stain it. And we use something called Kumasi Blue. You simply pour it in there and then onto a rotary shaker for staining. That's it. When you stick it on the rotary shaker, not too fast. If the gel smashes into the sides of the container too much, it'll rip. So just let it swirl in there and then you can stain it for about four or five four hours or so, but I like to let it stay overnight. So close up the lid, see you in the morning. And it's now the morning, so uh, we can save the kumasi. So you simply just pour it into uh, your container. Remember, use your finger, hold down the gels, and then simply pour it off. Now, the thing about staining with kumasi is that it stains everything initially. So we actually have to decolorize the gels. Uh, but before I do that, I like to just kind of remove some of the excess kumasi. So just a couple of rinses of distilled water. I'll just like stick some distilled water in there, a little bit of a shake, pour that out, add another distilled water. I'll do this two, sometimes three times, depending on how much is in there. Once again, make sure you hold onto the gel with your finger when you pour. And then we're going to add a uh, decolorizer. So you simply pour that in there. Again, keep it nice and slow. Uh, if you don't like having the shaker on while you're doing this, you can leave the shaker off. 
and not too fast. You don't want everything to spill, but also, once again, you don't want to destroy the gels. And look how blue the gels are. Now, to help with the decolorizing, what you can do is stick a little bit of, like a wad of Kim Wipe in the corner, and the Kim Wipe, as it sits there, starts to absorb the blue color, removes it from the decolorizing liquid that it's sitting in, and it just helps speed up the process. So this is about an hour and a half into the process. Uh, it still needs to be decolorized a little bit longer. Uh, notice how blue our Kim Wipes are. So I'm gonna simply uh, squeeze that out, add a fresh batch of Kim Wipes, just move that over, it actually helps to lift it. Uh, and you can already see the proteins in the, on the gel, right? But add a fresh uh, batch of uh, ball of Kim Wipes. And then uh, the liquid's just a little bit low for me. I rotated one of the gels. Um, so I, I'm just topping it up with just a little bit more decolorizer. I threw out that blue thing of Kim Wipes, and then I got class right now, so I'll be back. And I'm back. So it's been about four hours now. Uh, class kind of kept me busy, uh, but gel is pretty much ready to go, so I'm going to now change it out. Sometimes what happens if you leave it in the decolorizer too long, is your gels shrink as the water gets drawn out, so it helps to hydrate. So I poured it out, give it a little distilled water rinse a couple times, and then I'm just gonna float it in distilled water and just let it soak. But look at the gel when I put it back, cause here it comes, here it comes, and here it comes. Here, it, there it is, look at that. You can see the protein bands on the gel and let's look at it a bit closer. And so as you see, this process is so much more involved than an agarose gel. It's uh, much more time consuming, uh, even something like colorizing and then decolorizing it just takes so much longer right but uh, it's a wonderful thing to look at all these little blue bands that you see are um, the proteins that the kumasi has stuck to uh, lane one on the left is our protein standard ladder it actually comes pre-dyed but it does pick up the kumasi blue dye and then look at the notches top left for gel one which is on the top and then gel two top left bottom right and this allows me to orient when you're looking at um, a Kumasi stain gel, it's usually not that important, but uh, when you're doing a Western transfer, knowing the orientation of your gel is quite vitally important, actually, right? Because if you flip your gel the wrong way, uh, sometimes uh, you'll transfer your gel out, or your protein, sorry, the, uh, the wrong way, right? But ultimately, this is what we want to see. Here, what I want to see is, uh, what does my wholesale lysate look like? And generally, I'm pretty happy with what I see. I see proteins. Um, so when I do my Western blot on these samples, I can say, well, at least these samples have proteins. So I'll feel confident moving forward. 